On this occasion, we are required to find the vector AB. We have quite a bit of information given here, which not all of this information is necessary. The necessary information that we will make use of is OA is equal to 2A and OB is equal to 2B. We need to find the vector AB. In solving this problem, we may apply the triangular law that is generally given as AB is equal to OB minus OA. We have AB and we are saying that it is equal to OB minus OA which is a statement of the triangular law. That triangular law is applied when two vectors have a common point and it is applied in finding the vector that goes between the other two points. Here we have OB and OA. Therefore, O is a common point. The vector that we are about to find is AB, which is the vector that goes between the other two points, the other two apart from the common point. The triangular law is applicable in finding AB. And AB is equal to OB minus OA. That is your vector. The two given vectors are OA and OB. OA is 2A and OB is equal to 2B. It is not difficult for us just to place those two representations in this expression right here. The two given vectors are OA and OB with common point O. We may go straight ahead and find AB. As easy as that. OB minus OA OA is 2A and OB is 2B. OB, 2B, minus OA, 2A. That's all there is to it. When all of the conditions are met and we have all of the information, the triangular law is very quick and effective as we have just seen. In finding AB, OB going before OA seems to be a conflict. And we will take a look at that on the next slide. If students try to internalize, memorize, or recall the triangular law, because it is AB, students have a tendency to say OA minus OB. But the law is OB minus OA. Why is that so? We will show the vectors involved. The vectors involved are OB, which is this one, OA, which is this one, and of course we have the common point O, and we are finding the vector that goes between the other two points. We will include the general statement of the triangular law. AB must be in terms of OA and OB. This makes it necessary to go from A to O, then from O to B. If we are going from A to B, making use of the two vectors that are given, we cannot avoid going from A first to O and then from O to B. There is no other way. The first part of the motion goes from A to O, and that is opposite to the vector OA, which is the reason for it being included as negative. This is why it is placed second in the expression. Although we go from A to O first, because we are going opposite to OA, then it is given a negative sign. That is why we have the negative sign right there, like that because it is opposite to the direction of OA that we are going. We are going from A to O, opposite to the direction of OA 
Therefore, we have that negative sign given to it right there. And that is why it is placed second in the expression, only because it is negative. If we are going to go directly as indicated by the motion, then OA would normally go first. And then OB will go next. The vector OB is included as positive because the motion is in its direction. We do not need the positive sign because numbers are positive by default. But if it is not the first term in an expression, the plus sign is necessary. There we're going to place it second. We're going in the direction of OB in the second part of the motion. Therefore, OB is included as positive. Place the positive one at the front. All we do is just place the positive one at the front. And we have your version of the triangular law. AB is equal to OB minus OA. For access to hundreds of free videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Richard James Mathematics Resources. For unlimited access to thousands of exclusive full-length videos, please subscribe to our Vimeo channel, Richard James Mathematics Resources. For access to hundreds of free videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Richard James Mathematics Resources. For unlimited access to thousands of exclusive full-length videos, please subscribe to our Vimeo channel, Richard James Mathematics Resources.